Well, in this chapter, we're going to start our Year 2 A-level work looking at algebraic methods. And we're going to start off with a quick recap of how to multiply, divide, add and subtract algebraic fractions. So there are objectives. And so here we are, here's a quick starter, so you could stop the video now and then check your answers shortly. So here are the answers. So the thing is to ensure that you always factorise expressions in a fraction, so in any expression in the numerator and any one in the denominator, factorise and then cancel out. You can only cancel out one bracket with another bracket. You can't just cancel out part of a bracket. So as part of your GCSE, you were multiplying algebraic fractions and we learned that multiplying algebraic fractions was no different than multiplying numeric fractions. Um, so when we multiply fractions, we multiply denominators together and numerators together. But we must first see if we can cross cancel at the beginning. So any, when we're multiplying only, any term in the numerator can be cancelled with any in the denominator. So here I've got two a's. So a into a goes once, a into a goes once. So that would make our numerate our final answer C over B. The second example I would see first of all if I could simplify either my numerator or denominator. So I can't simplify my numerator. I will can multiply those through together. That will give me 3 bracket x plus 1 over 2. Now here I can see we've got the difference of 2 squared, so I can factorise that, which will give me x minus 1 over x plus 1, and we would then multiply those two together. So I can then cancel out my x plus 1 to give me a final answer of 3 over 2x minus 1. So when we're dividing a numeric fraction, we would flip the second fraction, or find the reciprocal of the second fraction, we would multiply the two together. So if we look at that, that would mean I would have p over q multiplied, and the reciprocal of r over q is q over r. And again, I can see that we can cancel out the Q's and my final answer would therefore be P over R. So in this last example I would rewrite my fraction, I would have X plus 2 and I tend to put brackets around an expression in the numerator or denominator over X plus 4. I would multiply and then flip the second fraction round. So again, I can see I have got the difference of two squares. So the numerator here would be x minus 4 and x plus 4. And here, 3x plus 6, I can see I can factorise to give me 3 bracket x plus 2. So we've always factorised if we can. And once we've factorised, we can then, and we're multiplying, so we can cancel out any term in the numerator with any in the denominator. So I've got an x plus 2 with an x plus 2. I'll just make that green so it's a bit easier to see. And I can cancel out an x plus 4 with an x plus 4 there. So my final answer is therefore going to be x minus 4 over 3. There are two more examples here of multiplying and dividing algebraic fractions. So the first thing you should do is factorise any expression in the numerator and or denominator 
and then so in the first one do this and then cancel out and the second one factorize your expression and then remember change the sign to a times and find the reciprocal of the second fraction so pause the video now and see if you get the right answer so here are our answers so what you should have noticed here is you've got your difference of two squares which is where the x plus 3 and x minus 3 came from and then you should have realised that you could have then cancelled out the x plus 3 with the x plus 3 to give you 10 over 5 x minus 3 but then you could have also cancel out divide 5 by 5 and 10 by 5 to give you 2 so to give you a final answer of 2 over x minus 3. So here, x squared plus x, we cancelled out. To give us x bracket x, we factorise to give x bracket x plus 1 over y. We change the divide to times and then flip that fraction round to give us y squared. And factorising this gave us x plus 1, x minus 2. So, cancelling out a y, y with one of those y's, I've cancelled out an x plus 1 with an x plus 1 to give x times y over y minus 2. Now, I would just like to point this out. This is really important. We, like I said this earlier, you can't just cancel out one term of an expression. So, this is seen as a term and you can't cancel out y with one part of that term. You, we had, you've got to keep both sides of the plus sign balance. Whatever you do to one side, you must also do to the other. Again, here are a couple of examples for you to have a go at. So you can pause the video now and then check your answers. So in this first one here, I'm going to have 3x over x minus 1. I'm going to change the sign to times and then find the reciprocal. So it will become 2x over x plus 1. So factor, so multiplying that through therefore will give me 6x squared over x minus 1 x plus 1 and I can't do, simplify that any further. It's worth noting here that you don't need to expand these brackets and very often it's better to have the numerator and or denominator in factorised form because that will make it more obvious as to whether you need to simplify or not. Looking at this second one we have x bracket x minus 1 so I'm going to factorise the numerator. Factorising this one will give me x minus 1 x minus 3. I'm going to change it to a multiplication so that will be over x and I'm going to factorise this expression here so I'll have 2x and x. I'll have minus 3 because that will give me minus 6 and a minus 1x will give me minus 7 and minus 1 times minus 3 will give me the plus 3. Now I can see here that I can simplify, cancel out my x's there. I've got an x minus 3 here and an x minus 3 here, an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. So my final answer for this will be 2x minus 1. So now you can have a go and do the questions in exercise 1b. The more you do the better. This here is the minimum. You need to show all your working out, but really you need to be able to work through these sort of questions quite confidently without making any silly errors. So you can pause the video now and complete exercise 1b. So in this next section we're going to focus on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Now, as with numerical fractions, we want to find a common denominator and we want this to be the lowest common denominator. 
Some people can do this by just multiplying the denominators together. So they would multiply these two together to give a common denominator of x plus 1 and x plus 2 and cross multiply. So over here we would have 3 x plus 2 and then multiply those two together minus 2 bracket x plus 1. Multiplying that numerator out would give 3x plus 6 minus 2x. Now remember your signs, we've got minus 2 times plus 1. So that will give minus 2 over x plus 1, x plus 2. Simplifying that numerator, 3x minus 2x will give me x. And plus 6 minus 2 will give me plus 4 and that's over x plus 1 x minus 1 plus 2 even ok and then at this stage you, if you could factorise you would and cancel out if you had to now if we look at this it's much better so you could use that method no matter what but that won't necessarily give you the lowest common denominator and you could if you use that method you could end up in a bit of a mess and make some silly mistakes so if I write this fraction out again I could say okay that would be 3 over x plus 1 and this fraction here the denominator is a difference of two squares so that was written as 4x over x plus 1, x minus 1. So I can see that my lowest common denominator is in fact going to be x plus 1, x minus 1. So if we look at that first fraction, we're going to have 3 over x plus 1. But if both fractions are going to have x plus 1, x minus 1, I've got to multiply this denominator by x minus 1 and do the same to the numerator. And this fraction has already got x plus 1, x minus 1, so that doesn't change. And then we can just simplify through. So that would give us x plus 1, x minus 1. Multiplying out the numerator would give me 3x minus 3 minus 4x. And I could write that as minus x minus 3 over x plus 1, x minus 1. There are other ways of writing that numerator. You could write minus bracket x plus 3 over x plus 1, x minus 1. And you should always try and do things, see if you can simplify. But that is what you would do. So I'll look for the lowest common denominator. So have a go at these questions and see how you get on. Pause the video and see how you get on. So we're adding, two, subtracting two fractions here, so I need a common denominator. So my common denominator is going to be x plus 2, 2x minus 1, 3. So I've added 2x minus 1 to the denominator of the first fraction, so I do the same to the numerator. Minus 6 over, so that was 2x minus 1. So I've got to add an x plus 2 in the denominator and do the same in the numerator. And then just simplify through. So my numerator will be 6x minus 3 minus 6x minus 6 times 2 is minus 12. So watch your signs. x plus 2. 2x minus 1. Simplifying the numerator here, 6x minus 6x is 0, minus 3 minus 12 will give me minus 15. And my denominator, x plus 2, 2x minus 1. 
looking at this here, I'm going to factorise my denominator first. So I have 31x minus 8. I can't factorise that any further. And this will give me 2x. X. I need plus 3x and minus 2. So I'm going to have plus 2 minus 1. So testing out minus 1x plus 4x will give me 3x. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. And my second fraction will stay as x plus 2. So my common denominator, write it over here so I don't run out of room, is going to be 2x minus 1x plus 2. So my first fraction will stay the same. And my second fraction, I've got an x plus 2 all there already. And I need a 2x minus 1. So if I've added that on, I've got to do the same in the numerator. And I've got 14. Expanding the brackets, I'll have 31x minus 8 minus 28x minus 14 times minus 1 is plus 14. And that will be over x plus 2, 2x minus 1. So 31x minus 28x is 3x. Minus 8 plus 14 is 6. I can see here, so that's minus 1. It come out very well. Factorising the numerator will give 3 bracket x plus 2. Let's move that up a bit, give me a bit more room. Over x plus 2, 2x minus 1. Cancelling out my x plus 2, x plus 2. My final answer is going to be 3 over 2x minus 1. Two more examples for you to have a go at. So pause the video again and then have a go. So if we look at this one, I'm going to say we've got 3x plus 5. Factorise the denominator, so that will give me x plus 4 x minus 3, minus 2 over x minus 3. So my common denominator is going to be x plus 4, x minus 3. That first fraction stays the same. And in the second fraction, I'm going to multiply the denominator by x plus 4. So I've got to do the same to the numerator. Expanding the bracket, I'm going to skip a step here. So expanding the bracket, so I have 3x minus 2x, which will just give me the x. Plus 5, minus 2 times 8 is minus 8. So 5 minus 8 is minus 3. And that's going to be over x plus 4, x minus 3. And I can see now that my term in the numerator is the same as the denominator. x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1, and that is 1. So my final answer is going to be 1 over x plus 4. Looking at the second example here. I'm going to factorise here, so that will give me 2 bracket 5x plus 2. And then I will have 3x x, and that's going to be plus 1 plus 1. It's only way of getting 1 there. And it works. Minus 3 over x plus 1. So this will stay the same. So I'll have 2 bracket 5x plus 2 over 3x 
plus 1, x plus 1. And my common denominator here, I've got my x plus 1 already. So to make it the same as the other one, I multiply it by 3x plus 1 in the denominator and do the same in the numerator. So now I'm going to expand and simplify. So 2 fives are 10x minus 9x will give me the x. 2 twos are 4, minus 3 times 1 is 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1, so plus 1. Put that in brackets. And here I'll have 3x plus 1, x plus 1. My x plus 1 will cancel out to give me an overall answer of 1 over 3x plus 1. So now you can do the questions in exercise 1c. Do as many as you can. The more you do, the better. What I've set here really is the minimum. And like I said before, you need to be pretty quick with these. A quick, quick and accurate. And this is so important because you'll be using algebra a lot when you're integrating and it's really important that you don't make a silly mistake early on because it would affect your whole answer. So practice is key. So moving on to algebraic methods and using partial fractions. So here we are, two quick questions for you to have a go at. I'm not going to go through these in depth, but pause the video and then check your answer. So here's the answer for the first one. I've got my common denominators. Make sure you watch out for your signs and then simplify. I can't simplify here, so there we go. Pause again for the second one. And here we have the answer to the second one. Our objectives here are to express a rational function as a partial fraction. So this time we're given, if you like, a a rational function, a fraction, and we want to split that up into the sum or difference of two, two or more fractions. And then to use partial fractions format along with the binomial expansion to simplify expressions. So if looking at, first of all, it's splitting partial into partial fractions. So any expression in the form ax plus b over px plus q, rx plus s, can be split into partial fractions of the form a over px plus q plus b over rx plus s. Now, don't be worried by the format here. That's just a general term. So basically, it means that given any fraction, we can split that up into two, the sum of two or more different fractions. So here we've got a fraction. We've got 6x minus 2 over x minus 3x plus 1. And the denominator is a product of linear terms. If, it, if, if the denominator is a product of linear terms, then it can be split into the, the sum of partial fractions where each denominator is a single linear term. So for example, we have 6x minus 2 over x minus 3, x plus 1. So here our denominator is a product of two linear terms. x minus 3 is linear, x plus 1 is linear. So that means we can split it up and write it as a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1, where a and b are terms that we need to find. And we can find a and b using two methods. We can find it by substitution or by comparing coefficients. And I'll go through each on the next couple of slides. So the first thing we do is we actually write down the question. So 6x minus 2 over x minus 3x plus 1 can be written in the form of a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1. Now if I take this right hand side and I add the fractions together, 
that would give me a x plus 1 plus b x minus 3 over x minus 3 x plus 1. And we can generally miss out this stage because if those two things are equal or equivalent, I can therefore say, therefore, 6x minus 2 is a x plus 1 plus b x minus 3. So if we're doing this by substitution, we need to work out what a and b are then I can say, make one of these brackets zero. So looking at this bracket here, I can therefore say, okay, when x equals minus one, this term will disappear. So on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. six times minus one will give me minus six, minus two will give me minus eight. So therefore minus eight, and if we've got minus one here, minus one minus three, is minus 4, so that would give me minus 4b. So therefore, I can say b equals minus 8 over minus 4, which equals 2. So b equals 2. OK, so that's the first one. What I can then go on and do is say, OK, what happens if I make that bracket equal to zero, that will eliminate the b term. So when x equals three. So when x equals three, I'll have two threes to six, sorry, six threes are 18, minus two will give me 16. Here, three plus one, so three plus one is four, that will give me four a. When x is three, three minus three is zero, b disappears. So therefore, a will equal 4. So my final answer, I would write 6x minus 2 over x minus 3, x plus 1, can be written as 4 over x minus 3. So I'm looking at this now and substituting my a and b, plus 2 over x plus 1. So I've split up and written, use substitution to write that rational function as partial fractions. So this time we've got the same question, but I'm going to use the second method in OK, so I'm going to skip, show you how to skip the next step because I know that when I add these fractions together my common denominator is going to be x minus 3x plus 1 so therefore I can say that my two numerators must be equivalent so that would give me a x plus 1 plus b x minus 3. And now I'm going to equate the coefficients. So I'm going to look at the coefficient of my x's. So I'm going to write that, the coefficient of x. Well, on the left-hand side, my coefficient of x is 6. My coefficient of x, if I expanded this bracket, I would have ax. So it would just be a. If I expanded this bracket, I would have bx minus 3b. So my coefficient of x would be b. So that gives me one equation. I'm now going to look at my constants. So my constants on the left-hand side is minus 2. When I expand this bracket, I will have a times 1. So my constant there is a. And when I expand this bracket, I would have minus 3b. So now you can see we've got a pair of simultaneous equations. So I am going to say, take my second equation minus my first equation. So minus 2 minus 6 would give me minus 8. a minus a would go. 
minus 3b minus b is minus 4b. It doesn't matter which way round you do it. You could have said 6 minus minus 2 is 8 and b minus minus 3b is 4b. It doesn't matter. You still get the same answer. Just watch out for your signs. So that would be minus 8 divided by minus 4. So b equals 2. And if b equals 2, I can then substitute it into one of my other equations. So b equals 2 in equation 1. I will have 6 equals a plus 2. So a will equal 6 minus 2, which equals 4. So I will get the same answers. And you should really write down your final answer in the form that they've asked for. So there we have it. So 6x minus 2 over x minus 3x plus 1 equals 4 over x minus 3 plus 2 over x plus 1. So that was by equating coefficients. Now it's up to you which method you want to use and you will probably find that in most questions you'll do later that you'll use a mixture of both methods. So we're told it says given that 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x, x minus 1, 2x plus 1 equals a over x plus b over x minus 1 plus c over 2x plus 1. Find the value of the constants a, b, c. So if I take the numerator, so I can say that 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 equal to x. Now this is our common denominator would be x, x minus 1, 2x plus 1. So a would be x minus 1, 2x plus 1. b is over x minus 1. So in the numerator I would have x, 2x plus 1, and c, I've got 2x plus 1 in the denominator, so in the numerator I would have x, x minus 1. And then I can just compare the numerators. Now I'm going to do this by substitution, so I'm going to start off and I want to eliminate a, If I say what happens when x equals 1, I will eliminate a and I will also eliminate c because both these brackets when x equals 1 will give me 0. So when x equals 1, the left hand side will be 6 plus 5 which is 11 minus 2 which would give me 9. a would disappear because this bracket here would be 0 b, when x is 1, I would have 2 plus 1 is 3, times 1 is 3, that would give me 3b. And when x equals 1, this bracket would be 0. So from this, I can say b must therefore equal 3. I'm now going to see what happens if I eliminate if I say what happens when x equals 0, that will eliminate my c and my b. Because both these here would be brackets multiplied by 0, which is 0. So my left-hand side, if I substitute 0 into here, I would have minus 2 
if I substitute 0 into here, I would have minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1a. So therefore, a would, e would equal 2. So I've got b equals 3, a equals 2. So now I'm going to see what will happen. So I look at my brackets here. I need to I know what b and a are. I need to know what c is. So I need to eliminate a and b. So I'm going to say okay. Now let's let x equal minus a half. So if x equals minus a half, when I substitute that into the left hand side, I would end up with minus 2. Sorry, I would end up with minus 3. And when I substitute it into my C, minus a half, here I would end up with 3 quarters C. And therefore, rearranging, we get C equal to minus 4. So therefore, my final statement, I would write that 6x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x, x minus 1, 2x plus 1, can be written as 2 over x plus b, so I'll put that over there, so that'll be 3 over x minus 1, minus Four, because c equals minus 4 over 2x plus 1. It's always important to write down this last stage here. So we've already solved this by substitution. We're now going to look at doing it by equating the coefficients. Okay, so I'm going to first of all look at the coefficients of x squared. So on the left hand side I would have 6, and if I expand this bracket I would have x times 2x, which would give me 2x squared, so the coefficient would be 2a. And if I expanded this one I would also have 2x squared, so that would be b2x squared, so that would be plus 2b. And if I expanded this bracket I would have cx squared, so that would be plus c. Now I'm going to look at the coefficients of x. On the left hand side I would have 5. If I expand this bracket I would have minus 2x plus x which is minus 1x so I would have minus a. Coefficient of x here I would have plus b and the coefficient here would be minus c. I'm now going to look at the constants. So on the left hand side so we'll look at our constant k. On the left hand side I have minus 2. If I expand this bracket I would have minus 1a. So I'd have minus a. Here I've got bx outside the bracket. So I wouldn't have just a constant there. And here I would have cx minus 1. So here I know worked out one already, I know that a must equal 2. So this gives us the exact, the same solution as doing it by substitution. So we have equating coefficients and do doing finding partial fractions by equating coefficients. So here we've been asked to split 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1, x minus 2 by equating coefficients. So I've got two brackets here, two linear brackets, so I know I can split that up into a over 2x minus 1. It doesn't matter which way round you put your a's and b's and b over x minus 2. So I could, you could have written b over 2x minus 1 and a over x minus 2, it doesn't matter. Okay, that means that I have 7x minus 8 equals a x minus 2 plus b 2x minus 1. 
For equating coefficients, I'm going to look at the coefficients of x. So on the left hand side I have 7, and on the right hand side, if I expand the bracket, the coefficient of x would be a, and the coefficient of b, x here would be 2b. Then I'm going to work out my constants. So on the left hand side I have minus 8. On the right hand side, if I expand the bracket, I would have minus 2a and minus b. OK, so we're going to solve these simultaneously. So I'm going to call that equation 1, and that is my equation 2. And I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2. And that will give me 14 equals 2a plus 4b. And underneath I'm going to write down equation 2, which is minus 2a minus b. I'm going to call that my new equation 3. And that is my equation 4. And now I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to take those two equations and add them together. So 14 plus minus 8 will give me 6. 2 plus that would be eliminated. And 4 plus minus b will give me 3b. So therefore I know that b equals 2. Subbing that in, I can therefore say that... 14 equals 2a plus 8, so 2a will equal 6, and a will equal 3. So therefore, my final answer I would say I would write that 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1, x minus 2 can be written as 3 over 2x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 2. So we're going to look at the same question. We want to split... 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1x minus 2 into partial fractions. And now I'm going to do it by substitution. So again, I will make the numerator 7x minus 8. I can say is a x minus 2 plus b 2x minus 1. So I've made my first statement. 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1x minus 2 can be written as a over 2x minus 1 and b over x minus 2. And then I've just looked at, added them together and just equated the numerators. So doing it by substitution, I want this bracket to equal 0. So I'll say, OK, what happens when x equals 2? This side here, 7 twos are 14. 14 minus 8 would give me 6. And 2 here, 2 twos are 4, minus 1 would give me 3b. So therefore, b equals 2. And I say, what well, if I want this bracket to equal 0, what will happen when x sorry, when x equals a half? So when x equals a half, I would have 7 times a half is 3 and a half, minus 8, so 7 times half minus 8 would give me minus 4 and a half. So minus 9 over 2. And on the right hand side my b would go and on the here when x is a half I would have a half minus 2 which would give me minus 3 over 2a. And dividing through I would therefore say, work out that a equals 3. So 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1x minus 2 can be written as 3. Over, make sure you get the right letter over the right fraction. So a equals 3, so it's 3 over 2x minus 1 plus b is 2. So that will be 2 over x minus 2. And we should 
have the same answer as before. It doesn't matter which method you use, and as I've said before, you will probably use a mixture of the two. I've got a little example here, an old exam question. It's worth three marks. I'll pause the video and let you have a go at doing this, and then you can check your answer in a minute. So here's our answer, and just make sure you understand the doesn't matter how you do it, whether you use it by substituting or equating coefficients, you'll get the same answer. But show a clear method, all stages of your working out. And don't forget, you should write your answer at the end. So you should write this equals 3 over 2x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 2. And here's another example for you to have a go at. You can pause this button and try either method or both methods to make sure you understand what you're doing. So the first thing I can see is I need to factorise a denominator. So I've written 13x minus 6 over x bracket 3x minus 2. It can be written as a over x plus b over 3x minus 2. So therefore equating the numerators would give me 13x minus 6 equals a 3x minus 2 plus bx. I've just done that. OK, so equating the coefficients, we're going to first of all take the coefficient of x. So on the left hand side, I would say that 13 would equal 3a plus b. And looking at my constant on the left hand side, I would say, look at the constant, minus 6 equals minus 2a, and I've got no b's. So I know what a is, so therefore I can say that a must equal 3, and if a equals 3, b will equal 4. So my final answer would be that 13 x minus 6 over x, 3x minus 2 can be written as 3 over x plus 4 over 3x minus 2. Okay, I'm now going to do the same question, but we're going to do it by the substitution method. So I would start off in exactly the same way, that 13x minus 6, factorising the denominator, x, 3x minus 2, can be written as a over x plus b over 13x minus 2. So 13x minus 6 can be written as a 3x minus 2 plus bx. So doing it by substitution, I want to make, work out what a is. So I'll say, okay, when x equals 0, my left hand side would be minus 6 equals 3 times 0 is 0, would be minus 2a, which would give me a equals 3. And then making this bracket equal 0, this first bracket with the a, to make that equal 0, it would be when x equals 2 over 3. So on the left hand side that would give us 8 over 3 and 2b over 3, which would give us b equals 4. So we've got the same as in our previous by doing it by equating coefficients. So therefore, as I've said before, we would say that 13x minus 6 over x, 3x minus 2, can be written as 3 over x plus 4 over 3x minus 2. So it doesn't matter which method you use, if it doesn't specify, it's up to you. So we've been asked to split 8x plus 1 over x squared 
minus x plus x minus 2. So now I can see we're going to have to factorise our denominator. So that'll be x plus 2, x minus 1. And we can write that as a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 1. So 2 there. Equating the numerators would give me 8x plus 1 equals a x minus 1 plus b x plus 2. And we're doing it equating the coefficients method. So I'm going to equate the coefficients of x. So I'm going to look at the coefficients of x. So the left hand side I would say that 8 equals a plus b. And then I'm going to equate the constant. So 1 equals minus a plus 2b. If we add these together, I could say that 9 equals 3b. So b will equal 3. And if b equals 3, if I sub it into one of the equations, I would say that 8 equals 3 plus b, or 3 plus a. So therefore, a must equal 5. And doing it by the substitution method, I would say, I'll do it in a different colour so it stands out. I would say that 8x plus 1 over x plus 2, x minus 1, can be written as a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 1. Equating the numerators, 8x plus 1 equals a x minus 1 plus b x plus 2. And doing it by substitution, I will say OK. Looking at this bracket here, we'll say what happens when x equals 1. We want that bracket to equal 0. So when x equals 1, the left hand side will be 9. That will give me 0 equals 3b. So therefore b equals 3. If I want this bracket to equal 0, it will be when x equals minus 2. So minus 16 plus 1 will give me minus 15 on the left hand side. And minus 2 minus 1 will give me minus 3a. So therefore a will equal 5. And for both questions, whichever method you do, you should always write your final answer. So it would be 8x plus 1 over x plus 2, x minus 1 can be written as 5 over x plus 2 and b is over the x minus 1, so that would be plus 3 over x minus 1. Now you're probably wondering when you can use partial fractions. Now partial fractions can be useful when integrating. So we couldn't just integrate this straight away, it would be too hard. So you, you'd learn to recognise that the only way to integrate this would be to split it up into partial fractions. So I would, first of all, I would say, OK, we're going to take 1 over x, x plus 5. And I would say that this could be written as a over x plus b over x plus 5, and then therefore looking at the numerators, I would say that 1 was equal to a x plus 5 and b x. So doing it by, I'm going to do it by substitution, I'm going to say okay I want that to equal 0, so we'll see what happens when x equals minus 5. When x equals minus 5 I will still have 1 equal to minus 5b, so therefore b equals minus 1 fifth, 
and when x equals 0, so looking at this one, I will also have 1 equals 5a, so a equals 1 fifth. So therefore, the integral of 4, 1, 1 over x, x plus 5 with respect to dx can be written as the integral between 4 and 1 of a over x, so that's 1 fifth divided by x, which is 1 over 5 x plus the integral between 4 and 1 and b, sorry, be minus, because we've got minus 1 fifth, minus 1 fifth, so that's 1 fifth divided by that, so it'll be 1 over 5 x plus 5 with respect to dx. I should just point out here that this should actually be Because one fifth divided by x is one fifth times one over x, which is one over five x. Now, when we're integrating, I can take the one fifth outside, so I have one fifth between four and one of one over x with respect to dx minus take the one fifth out, one fifth four one one over x plus five dx and that would give me one fifth if I just take out the whole one fifth. The integral of one over x is ln x. And the integral of one over x plus five is going to be ln x plus five between four and one. So that would be one fifth and x equals four. And x equals four. Be one fifth ln four minus ln nine. Minus when we sub in one ln one minus ln six. Now we know that ln 1 is 0, I'm just going to simplify. So that would give me ln 4 minus ln 9 minus ln 1, which is 0, minus minus ln 6, which is plus ln 6. Using my log laws, I'm going to say so that will give me ln 4 over 9 plus ln 6, which is 1 fifth, multiplying these two together, so that was 4 over 9 times 6, which is 1 fifth ln 4 six of 24 divided by 9, which you simplify down to ln 8 over 3. So that one was good practice actually. It shows you how we can use partial fractions for integrating and it also looks at your log laws and remembering your standard integrals. So on our next slide I've asked you to do some questions. I think the more you do the better. Um, you need to be pretty slick with these so the more exam questions you can do 
the better please. Um, this is the minimum amount but you must always show you're working out. Remember the basic things, you might be given a fraction and you need to, before you split it up, you need to make sure you factorise a denominator and you decide whether you prefer equating coefficients or you do it by substitution. I would have a go at doing both methods because sometimes you may need to use both methods and they may very well ask you to use a method. So I think it'd be a good idea to practice both. Any questions, just ask.